Good morning. It's Friday morning and here I am sitting in the living room of the church manse. Uh, how are you? Uh, I hope you're well. Um, it's been a week of questions, new questions, difficult questions. Uh, what's going on? Uh, how on earth am I supposed to uh, respond? What's going to happen next? Why is this happening? Uh, and any number of new and unexpected uh, problems and complications as we all have to, at the same time, rethink how we do uh, everything. And I know for some of you that this has been a hard week uh, uh, or a painful week. And I know for others who are on the front line, um, uh, working within our NHS and other aspects of our core infrastructure, making really hard decisions uh, for the good of all of us, that there's perhaps been no time to think about anything other than what's been immediately uh, in front of you. And my prayers, and I'm not alone in this, my prayers uh, are with you and for you in the midst of all that you're doing. And as a minister, I'm faced with the thought of, well, what does it mean to be a minister when I can no longer get the, the members of the church into the same place at the same time? How do we pray with one another? How do we pray for one another? How do we hear God's word and respond to it, not just as individuals, but as a church family and I don't have all the answers uh, to those questions um, and there'll be a, a measure of uh, like with everything else at the moment feeling it out as we go along. There is a plan however that for Sunday there will be something prepared um, that can't uh, fully replicate what we do on a Sunday morning uh, in usual circumstances but that will help us to hear from uh, God's word together. And that will be distributed using technology uh, with other solutions in place for those who don't have the access to the internet and obviously aren't, won't be watching this video, uh, for example. I've spent a lot of this week on the phone and I would encourage you uh, to use your phone uh, uh, to reach out, uh, to maintain and deepen friendships in the midst of this. I know One Reflect Group have already arranged um, to have a, a joint video call at the usual time that they would meet so that they can uh, chat, catch up, share, pray. Uh, and that's going to be so, so important in the weeks ahead. Now, I want to share with you from God's word. And one of the interesting things about the Bible as we read through it is sometimes the circumstances from which it is written or is addressing seem so extreme and so raw that it can disconnect with our uh, our conventional lives. But that means at a time like this, when everything is up in the air, we see the immediacy and the relevance of it for us. I want to read to you one of the Psalms. So this is a, a prayer uh, or, or a song addressed uh, to God. It's Psalm 121 and it begins with the heading, uh, A Song of Ascents. And we get the sense that this is a song for the road, for a journey, a, a pilgrim song. Uh, the anticipation that that journey might well include things that are uh, difficult, unforeseen obstacles, distractions, problems, but that there might also be uh, scope for discovery and joy and learning and shared experience. So let me read the psalm to you now. It begins with these words. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Amen. So this psalm begins with, with, with a glance upwards to the hills uh, and then yet another question. Now, how do we interpret that look to the mountains? There, I suppose there are two different ways, two quite different ways of looking at it. First, uh, the way that comes perhaps natural to me as someone who loves going out into the, the Scottish hill, into the mountains. It's a, a refuge, a, a safe place, a place of uh, security. But there's another way of reading it. Um, 
If you go to the Holy Land, you'll see that most of the roads wind their way through valleys and gorges with rocky outcrops on all sides where there could be, and sometimes is, uh, the threat and danger of attack and assault. We think of the story of the Good Samaritan that begins with that man who was attacked by thieves on the road. And the sense that looking at the hills and seeing this possibility of a, a, a close and present danger and then thinking, well, where will my help come from? I once had an experience uh, in the middle of the night on the A82, the road that kind of cuts down the side of Loch Lomond. Um, so I crashed my car in the middle of the night. I wrote it off and I had enough battery on my phone to make just one call. And we're so used to having access to friends, family, our, our networks of support and help uh, and all the rest of it. But stripped of that, you're left wondering, where will my help come from? In my case, I'm pleased to know I wasn't left there all that long. I was uh, uh, helped by a policeman who happened to be driving by. And then in humbling circumstances, I was picked up uh, by my little sister. But the psalmist here... Uh, looks uh, to the hills and beyond them for a source of help. They look to no one less than the maker of heaven and earth. As Derek Kidner has written a commentary on this psalm, says, here is living help, primary, personal, wise and immeasurable. Primary, he's always there. It's as if God is ready to catch us always on call, always available, never uh, negligent. It's personal, it's for us, uh, on the road in all the different circumstances that it will bring. There's a sense of the, the totality of God's care. There are all these different words and images uh, that point to God providing both refreshment as well as uh, shelter, what we need to take the next step, but also protection from when things are at their hardest. Throughout it all, a sense that God does not uh, remove us from the situations that daunt us and threaten to overwhelm us, but comes alongside us and helps us uh, to take the next step. And then there's the closing affirmation. It speaks of God keeping us from all harm. Perhaps that raises a question for you as you think of the, the intensive care units in our hospitals. And all that's going on there right now is people struggle uh, to help and support those who are most unwell and fighting for life in some circumstances. What does that mean? The psalm invites us to look from ourselves to the maker of heaven and earth uh, for the answers to those questions. And that's what we need to do for one another, uh, to pray to God to pray with one another, to pray for one another, to pray for those who are feeling so drained, strained and exhausted that they're unable uh, to pray for themselves. I ask you to pray for me and my family as I pray for you. And I send this with the love of all the Sinclairs, uh, Andrew, Harris and Judith as well. And we'll be in touch and we will remain a family brought together by God's grace and for his glory. Amen.